Hi, everyone. Welcome to Team Referral Network's monthly webinar series, The Brown Bag Lunch and Learn. I'm Kelly Holmes. I'm the CEO and founder of Team Referral Network and Team Franchise Corp. I will be your host for today's featured event, and I'm very excited about today's event. Our Brown Bag Lunch and Learn webinar series is designed for busy entrepreneurs like all of you, business owners who want to invest in knowledge that can help them succeed. Today's topic is everyone can be a hero. And this story that you're going to hear today is very special. And I think this is applicable to people in business today because we all want to be a hero, whether it's a hero in our family, a hero in our company, a hero in our community. Um, but how everyone can be a hero is going to be the topic today, and I'm really excited for you to learn more from our very special guest. So with that in mind, I'm going to go into Frank's introduction. Now, Frank, I got to share something with you. If I got an introduction this long for any other visitor guest on our webinar series, I would have whittled it down and shortened it up and hit the highlights only. But there was no way to cut out some of the things that you have on here. So I'm going to be reading it and it's a long list of accomplishments. So I want everybody to tune in and listen to what this man has accomplished in his lifetime, lifetime so far, right? So far, Frank. Mm -hmm. And, um, and uh, it's something that we can all aspire to. So Frank Shankwitz is best known as the creator, co-founder, and first president and CEO of the Make-A-Wish Foundation, an extraordinary charity that grants the wishes to children with life-threatening illnesses. From humble beginnings, the Make-A-Wish Foundation is now a global organization that grants a child's wish somewhere in the world on an average of every 28 minutes. Wow. Frank is a U.S. Air Force veteran and has a long and distinguished career in law enforcement. He began as, a highway, as an Arizona Highway Patrol motorcycle officer and retired as a homicide detective with the Arizona Department of Public Safety with 42 years of service. Thank you for that service, Frank. Thank you. Frank has been featured Thank in numerous you. publications and television programs, including Inside Edition, The Doctors, Hallmark Home, and Family, Fox News, and CBS. Frank has received several awards, including the White House Call to Service Award from both President George W. Bush and President Donald Trump, and the Making a Difference in the World Award from the U.S. Military Academy at West Point. In 2015, Frank joined six U.S. presidents, as well as Nobel Prize winners and industry leaders, as a recipient of the Ellis Island Medal of Honor. Again in 2015, following his commencement address, Frank was presented with an honorary doctorate degree, Doctor of Public Service from the Ohio State University. Frank was identified as one of the 10 most amazing Arizonans in a front page article in the Arizona Republic newspaper. In January 2016, Frank was identified in Forbes magazine as Forbes top 10 keynote speakers. In April 2017, Frank was presented in the Unite for Humanity Celebrity Icon Social Impact Award, joining past recipients Matthew McConaughey and Morgan Freeman. In February 2018, Frank shared the stage with Matthew McConaughey at Universal Studios at the LA City Gala and was presented the first City Gala Hero Award. Frank's new book, Wishman, was re-released in September 2018 and is available on Amazon and via his website. In May 2019, following his commencement address, Frank was presented with an honorary doctorate degree of law from St. Norbert College. In June 2019, Frank joined 89 celebrities when he received his star on the Las Vegas Walk of Fame. And we're going to be talking about that in a little bit here. In October 2019, Frank received a Lifetime Service Award from Women of Global Change. And in November 2019, Frank received his star on the Coronado Island Walk of Stars. Again in 2019, Frank received the 2019 Arizona Ambassador of the Year Award from the Consular Corps of Arizona. This year, in 2020, Frank was appointed, appointed as an honorary commander of the U.S. Air Force 161st Air Refueling Wing based in Phoenix, Arizona. It is a two-year position. 
His Life Story Wishman, a feature motion picture, was, was released in June 2019 and has won several awards, including being qualified for an Academy Award for Best Picture Oscar and is currently streaming on Netflix, and we'll be talking about that as well. Frank is a board member on several nonprofits, including U.S. Vets, the Wounded Blue Broadway Hearts, Project Kind, the Rub Rugby Foundation, Safe Beat, Women of Global Change, and Level Up Home Seattle. Information on how to contact Frank for a speaking engagement is available on Frank's website as well. And ladies and gentlemen, I'm very honored and pleased to introduce to you Frank Shankwitz. Thanks for being on today, Frank. Oh, thank you. What a great interval. Someone asked me, <laughs> hey, why is your bio so long? And I said, well, I guess because I'm old. That's <laughs> <laughs> I love that, though. I love that. Oh, I was supposed to change the screen there and show this beautiful uh, uh, PowerPoint piece right here. But we're going to be talking about these things here in just a minute. So I'm going to move on and talk about our theme today, Frank, about everyone can be a hero. And, you know, our audience that's listening today are already heroes, we know, because they are surviving and thriving during these times. They're making things happen. They're business owners, they're entrepreneurs, they're sales professionals, and they're really looking to give back at this critical time, grow at this critical time. So what do you mean by everyone can be a hero? And just what you said, the biggest thing you just mentioned, give back when you can. As a young boy, uh, a very traumatic childhood, and that's why Hollywood made a movie about it. But I was taught as a young boy, 10 years old, uh, when you can, Frank, give back. And now this is in the 50s, early 50s. What do you mean, my mentor's name was Juan Belgadillo, little town of Seligman, Arizona. What do you mean, Juan, give back? We don't have anything. The poor people are helping us. And he said, you don't have to have money to give back. You can give back your time. And he gave an example. Look at the widow Sanchez. Look at her front yard. She's always trying to help you out by bringing you beans and tortillas. Look at, you can help by cleaning out those weeds. You can help by scraping and painting her porch. You don't have to have money to give back. And it's the same in the business world, how to help your community. That's great. You know, it's so important to, you know, I don't know if you know it, but in Team Referral Network, in every single chapter, so, you know, hundreds of chapters out there in the United States, and of course, we're virtual, we're all virtual now, but we also have virtual only meetings, so we're out there in the world internationally, we donate a membership to a local nonprofit or charity that in some way, shape, or form benefits children or families. And so they become a member of this weekly meeting that we do and talk about their organization and the fellow teammates, their members in their chapter, try to figure out different ways that they can help those community um, nonprofits. And it's been our community outreach program from day one for 18 years. And so I'm really proud to say that we have members literally all over the world helping nonprofit charities, much like what you helped found um, all those years ago, um, all over. And it's a really wonderful part of our organization and it's our members that make it happen. So I think they're being heroes that way too. And that's exactly what we're talking about. Maybe we'll talk about later about with nonprofits uh, making donation, how to advance your brand when you're doing that. Excellent, and that is what we're gonna be talking about here. And now here I just, you know, some of these touching pictures of our original Make-A-Wish kid, right? You want to share a little bit about that? Yeah, this is a little bit. Now, we go back to 1980, and um, obviously, we see the pictures. Patrolman over there is on a highway patrol, and this is a period when a television show, Chips, was very popular. Mm -hmm. uh, people don't remember Chips. It's a bench of two California highway patrolmen, Ponch and John. The kids loved it. Uh, I got a call one day from our commanders, and they said, we've just been informed of a little seven-year-old boy named Chris. Chris, and uh, who's the picture on here? Uh, Chris has terminal leukemia, only a couple of weeks to live, and his heroes are Ponch and John, and he told his mother, when I grow up, I want to be a motorcycle officer, just like Ponch and John, and asked if there's any way he could meet one of the highway patrolmen, because we had trained with California Highway Patrol initially. Our uniforms are almost identical, except obviously ours said Arizona. And a whole day was made, a special day where I could meet this little boy. Um, in fact, he was picked up at his hospital and, and our state police helicopter flown to our headquarters building 
when I was standing by with a motorcycle. And this little boy just come off my beats. And all of a sudden, the door opens up in the helicopter. I had never met this little boy. He jumps out, runs over. He's running and laughing and having a great time like a typical seven-year-old. And we just, because of the lack of time today, we kind of advanced this story. But Chris went on that day to become the first and only honorary highway patrol motorcycle officer then in the history of the patrol, complete with his own uniform that we had custom made for him, his own badge that's still assigned to him today. And the biggest thing to him, his motorcycle wings that made him a motorcycle officer. And mm -hmm. unfortunately, Chris passed away a couple of days later. Our commanders came to me and said, we have just lost a fellow officer. We learned he's gonna be buried in a little town called Kewanee, Illinois. I want you and your partner to go back and give him a full police funeral which we did. Now, this is a day before internet, cell phones, anything like that, Kelly. But when we landed in Chicago, the press picked it up our story. Yeah. And interviewed us and in fact notified Illinois State Police, City Police, County Police in the area of this little town of Kewanee, who all met us to give this little boy a full police officer funeral procession. And he was buried in uniform. His grave art <laughs> reads, Chris Gracious, Arizona Trooper. But flying okay. home, Flying home from Chicago, I just started thinking, here's this little boy that we're showing here that had a wish, and we made it happen. And that's when the idea to start this foundation, the Make-A-Wish Foundation. And this little boy, Chris, he's the inspiration that started the whole foundation. Okay, Frank, you're not allowed to make the host cry. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, maybe that's why we shouldn't be on camera, huh? <laughs> um, I've heard your story multiple times. In fact, you were um, a featured speaker at our um, big event several years ago. Um, and that was just such a wonderful time. And I think that was the first time I really got to hear the story about Chris and you starting the foundation. And, and just do a quick snapshot. The foundation started because of this. And today it's you know, where, what it you mean? It has grown now worldwide, again, just because of this boy. But we now have 62 chapters in the United States, 45 inter international chapters on five continents. You mentioned a wish and it, the average is between 28, 38 minutes, it changes, whatever. But the amazing figure right now is we have just recently granted our half a millionth wish to children wow. all over the world. So that's a half million children impacted. And by the way, when we started this foundation, it was for children with terminal illnesses. We changed the mission about 20 years ago with children with life-threatening illnesses because I like to say through the grace of God, modern medicine, more and more children, in fact, are surviving. Amen. That's great. Well, you say it's all because of Chris, but a lot had to do with you too. So that's just an amazing, amazing story. So this has led you into this amazing life. And I know, you know, because I know you, that you get to travel around the world speaking. You're obviously the recognition and the awards you're presented. You know, tell me what you have going on right now. I know we're gonna to get to the movie and the book here, but, but what else is going on in Frank Shankwit's life right now? And well, and, and unfortunately, because the coronavirus, like you say, we're not traveling. And just like your event, we did a few years ago, I, I love so much interacting with the people, not only mm -hmm. during the presentation, but especially afterwards. I'm not one of the speakers that says, okay, here's my presentation, and I go. I, I'm not selling anything on stage. I love interacting. I'll hang around for a full day or two, whatever it might be. Uh, but right now, I'm doing a lot of these virtual type interviews, keep me very busy. Uh, and you mentioned these uh, eight other nonprofits that we're developing around the nation, keeping me very busy and promotion of the movie, doing a lot of that. But so much fun right now is we're developing two possible new TV series. Uh, one is called Wishman Angel Patrol. And uh, we've uh, just completed the deck on that. We're now sending it out to uh, potential sponsors. And the major networks have contacted us saying develop a show around me that we can get on the network hopefully next season. Wow, Frank, that's really exciting. That's great. It is. All right. It's fun. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's good. I'm glad to hear you're not just sitting around resting on your laurels, okay? <laughs> yeah, when I'm not doing that, I'm cutting brush. So yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> especially this time of year, right? I don't think our, our audience knows, but uh, but you are in the mountains of Arizona and um, I know you've in the past had some significant wildfires around you. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. 
We know what it's like. We're here in Southern California, a lot of us too. So to tell us about this photo, Frank. What is going on here? This, uh, I'm receiving the Ellis Island Medal of Honor. I mean, this was just one of the many highlights, but to be chosen for this, and as you read, uh, this only goes out to generally dignitaries. Six, only six U.S. presidents have received this honor. A few uh, Nobel Prize winners. And I was just, I couldn't believe I was invited to accept this honor. Uh, my wife and I, this is on Ellis Island. In fact, they closed down all of Ellis Island just for the recipients to go over there. A, a big, big event. And just so much pride. I can't even tell you how honored and humble I was to receive this award. That's nice. That is great. That is great. I love this shot of you here um, in front of the book. Now, I want you to tell us about the photo, um, but this is going to lead us into really talking about, I remember when you wrote the book. I mean, I remember the original book, and then I know you did the relaunch of the book, and that was your first time becoming a published author, I believe, right? Yes, yes. I've been right. featured in many books, but this was my first one that I wrote myself. And, and we're gonna tie that a little bit into our audience and how to um, advance your brand because your brand was the wish man. Your story was the wish man. If you hadn't really taken, taken the initiative to create this brand and advance this brand, you wouldn't have the um, pending um, TV series deals or the movie streaming on Netflix or any of that, correct? Correct. And, and as you well know, you've got to keep your name, you've got to keep your brand out there. Whatever mm -hmm. you do to advance that brand, that's the only way people are going to stay in contact with you. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And where are you during this picture and the, um, the beautiful trophy that's there as well? This, award one, this one was at a uh, political rally, um, I will say, for a Republican Women of Arizona rally. Mm -hmm. And they asked me to speak, and then afterwards they wanted me to uh, autograph my books, which I did. And they asked for you to bring this uh, Oscar looking type trophy that I received over in Hollywood. So that's where <laughs> the picture was taken. That's great. That's a great shot. I love it. Well, that's a, certainly advancing your brand. And, and I bet the Las Vegas Walk of Fame didn't hurt in advancing your brand as well. Again, that's so much fun. It's such an honor. 80 some people only have ever received their star in the Las Vegas Walk of Fame. And what's kind of fun to me is I'm only two stars away from Elvis Presley. And, wow. And I've met Elvis Presley during my career, and I'm very good friends with Elvis Presley's stepbrother, who now is living, in fact, back in Las Vegas. So it's kind of fun. And I always tell my friends when you're over there, please go over there and shine it up a little bit. Or... <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I'll definitely visit it the next time I'm in yeah, Vegas. That's, as well. that's right on the Las Vegas Strip, right by the uh, Paris Hotel. Oh, perfect. Okay, that's great. That's great. Okay, so we're going to switch gears just a little bit here and talk about a very special woman in your life who I've had the honor and blessing of meeting as well. Um, I know she's been by your side many years. Why don't you tell us the love story of Kitty and Frank? Well, Kitty uh, and I have been married now 37 years. I don't know if I'm getting that right, maybe a year or two. Uh, <laughs> and, and she says, well, depends on the situation. Maybe it's only like 10 years. Or if it's a bad day, maybe 50 years, whatever it might seem like. <laughs> but, uh, and this is our second marriage for both of us. But Kitty, when I, I was on a, the Highway Patrol, a 10-man tactical motorcycle squad, we worked the whole state of Arizona. Kitty was our traveling secretary. Uh, when we would have all 10 men together in a big arrest situations, whatever it might be, uh, she wrote all our reports, got them to the port. So we knew each other. And then one year in 1978, I was in a bad wreck that, in fact, I was killed in the line of duty, brought back to life. That's a whole story right there. Wow. Uh, it was a little town where they didn't have a hospital, just a little clinic. I was too injured to even helicopter me back to Phoenix. And they told Kitty, uh, you've got to stay with him in, the, in the, our hotel room that we had to keep him from going into shock. And sometimes she says, I wish I would have let you go into shock. But... <laughs> <laughs> But it was at that time we started paying a little bit of attention to each other. And then in 1983, we, we got married and it's been an adventure ever since. She's been, she helped me put together the whole Make-A-Wish Foundation, one of the co-founders. I just support all the time. Every time I say I can't do this anymore, I'm just beat. And especially with Make-A-Wish, I was trying to do Make-A-Wish and a full-time police officer. And I'd say, I, I can't do it. And she said, Frank, we just learned of another child. So just pushing on and on. So she's my partner in crime. 
That's great. That's great. Well, you have to be sure to give her my hellos and send my love to her. All right. Well, let's talk a little bit about the Wishman movie. I mean, streaming right now on Netflix. I see it on there when I go on to my Netflix. Um, I know this was a, um, a, a labor of passion and love to get it made. Give us the backstory and, and tell us a little bit about it. Yeah, I was a speaking event in, in San Diego. In fact, where we both know a gentleman named Greg Reed um, that was filming a documentary called Stickability. And part of the documentary invited me to go on stage and speak about my, my, the Make-A-Wish and so on. And afterwards, and it was somewhat of a canned audience. We had about 30 actors in the audience, but the rest a couple hundred people. And after my presentation, a big standing ovation. And all of a sudden, Greg came up on stage to me and said, what's your wish? And I said, what do you mean? He said, well, what do you want? You need a new pickup? You need a new corral round pen? What do you want? <laughs> and I said, it's never about me. I never thought about it. He said, well, if you had a wish, what would it be? And I said, well, I'd just like to have my story told. So my kids, my grandkids knew that, that dad did something cool in his life. And after the presentation, the director of the Stickability, Theo Davies, who is the director and screenwriter for Wishman, came back and he said, I want to do a story about your life. And I thought he was talking about a documentary. And I said, no, you don't. He said, yes, we do. We want to do a feature film. And I built that with involved with Hollywood sometimes on other projects. And I said, we can do that. But in my contract, I have to have complete script and screen approval of what the content is going to be. You go to a movie that says based on a true story, Hollywood mm -hmm. really stretches it Yeah, out. they really, yeah, I've, I've known. Yeah, and I didn't want them to stretch that far. That's why I asked for uh, script approval, which we got. And that's why it took two and a half years for Theo to write the screenplay. A give and take, give and take. But what a job he did. Like you mentioned that the, we became qualified for Academy Award uh, nomination last year for Best Picture. And it took, it took us a total of six and a half years to get this to screen. Wow. But, yeah, what a job. And also real quick, Arizona doesn't give tax credits to Hollywood anymore. And I really lobbied hard to get this movie made in Arizona, in my mm -hmm. area, because I wanted to give back to the community that helped me so much back in my teenage years and growing up years and so on. And you know, Hollywood brings a lot of money in the community. So we did that. We were able to get locations that they normally charge twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 free because I knew the people. And just, wow. just on the area locations, it saved over a million dollars on location costs. So, so happy to have it filmed in our area. That's really special too. That's great. Well, let's go ahead and watch the trailer here. Okay. Okay. Uh oh, hang on here. Hang on. Technical difficulties. There we go. I'm going to back it up.
So, Frank, can you hear me? I can hear you. I, I lost the audio when they show in the trailer. Yeah, I don't know what happened. Technical difficulties, too. I checked my volume. Oh, no. Hang on here. <laughs> okay. My goodness. Okay. Sorry, guys. Hold on one second. I'm really out of my element here. Okay. Let's try this all over again. So, hi everybody. Now I can see most, some of you, okay. Sorry about that, Frank. I am, did this in practice and everything went fine. And then uh, in the real world, it just didn't go as well. But the great news is, is we'll send the trailer out with everybody on the recording. So we'll send you a link when we send out the recording because everybody will get a copy of the recording even if you're here live. And we'll also send out a link to the trailer with the recording of the webinar itself. Sound good? Yeah, and, and the trailer we're showing, it, the movie is a period piece, 1950 to 1980, <clears throat> showing me from 10 years old to 38 years old when I created the Make-A-Wish Foundation. But the big thing in the movie is the events of my life, the, the negativity, how it changed the positivity, the people that influenced me, the te people that have helped me uh, to start and create this foundation. That's just wonderful. Well, and it makes it really easy right now. We're all looking for things to watch on TV. So we definitely can go to Netflix and just search Wishman and be able to watch the full length feature film there, which will be amazing. And Frank, I know that you have copies available um, for uh, autograph copies, autograph copies of your book. You want to tell us how we can get access to that. Yeah, just go to my website, Wishman1, the number one, wishman1.com. And I've got an online store there. Just click it and uh, we can get you an autographed copy. That would be amazing. And then I also know that you're looking um, for speaking engagements. And today we're doing them virtually from, you know, our homes and our offices. Um, and so is that something that if we have or work with an organization that brings in outside speakers, we can contact you through the website for that as well? Yeah, definitely. And like a lot of us, the speaker world, I mean, so many of the events have been canceled. And fortunately, a lot of mine are now getting rebooked into 2021. But, uh, and I, like I said earlier, this is fun on the virtual, but I, mm -hmm. miss, I miss the audience interaction, direct interaction. I hear you. I'm a, I'm a hugger and I'm a people person and I'm a speaker who feeds off of the energy of an audience and uh and you can you can get some good energy off of a nice zoom you know but uh, oh, but it's sure. definitely not the same as being there in person with everybody i'm asking sam to go ahead and and turn your video cameras on since we've gone off the powerpoint and i've stopped the screen share because i'm technologically challenged i wanted everybody to um, wave to frank if you want to go on to camera so sam if you can um, let everybody go on their camera. Everybody turn on your camera and let's wave hi to Frank. <laughs> and I hey, see Trudy there from Arizona and Darcy came <clears throat> on early and Krista, Pam, Patty, Kimberly, Ricky Shaw. I saw him earlier. We see his camera shot. Oh, he's clapping. Okay. Dale, you know Dale Fakuda. Do um, Frank and Dale have met um, back in the big event um, when, when Frank was a guest at our big event. So that's great. All right, anybody have any questions for Frank since we've got a couple of minutes here and I've technologically bombed. And so um, <coughs> I'm, I'm here to help facilitate any questions that you guys might have. And, and if I can interrupt just for a minute, Kelly, we were talking about earlier about how to advance your brand and especially in the nonprofit world. I mean, like I said, I sit on, on eight different boards and uh, it's always nice when the community, especially like the business community, gives a nonprofit a check. I mean, we, that's what we live on, that's what we, but instead of just giving that check, there may be just this little thing in the newspaper, if anything, on the business end, make it a big, big deal and get, get where the press is gonna come up there, get that big giant check and take pictures of it. Yes. And sure, mm -hmm. Yeah, and make sure the whole community knows what they're doing because that's all you're doing is advancing your brand to the community. I'm gonna give you a brief example of even not a check, uh, a real estate firm up in the Prescott area. Uh, we had a, a, lady, a lady and her husband had a very nice home, manicured, 
he died, unfortunately. She couldn't take care of it anymore. It went into disarray where even the city said, you know, we're going to fine you, you know, if you don't clean the weeds, paint everything else. The realty group got together. Realtors know every contract in the world, right? Nice. <laughs> But they got together with their team, with the contractors, went in there, redid the yard, painted, fixed everything up. And even the press from Phoenix came up, just splashing this all over the place. So what a way to advance your brand on that. That's a, that is really a great idea. And since almost all of our chapters of Team Referral Network rally around a member who is a nonprofit that benefits children or families in some ways, I think being able to leverage the exposure for our brand while we're doing something great with a community partner like one of our nonprofits would be just phenomenal. So that's just great advice for us. I appreciate it. Yeah, and another um, example is I'm on the board of U.S. Vets. So U.S. Vets is not the Veterans Administration. We find homeless veterans, we get them into temporary housing, constantly job training, job placement, permanent housing. We've got a big complex here now that we developed in our town of Prescott because we're close to a veterans hospital. But we needed a van to haul these guys around, a big van. Went to several local dealers and said, listen, you're gonna give us a van. <laughs> you're, you're gonna keep the maintenance on of everything else. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna splash, we're gonna wrap that van donated by two U.S. vets. Well, the one dealer did, and their sales just increased by the local community. Oh, yeah. The van in that brand. They're so thankful. That's great. I bet. I bet. So good ideas. Well, Frank, it has been truly an honor and a pleasure to have you on this month's Brown Bag Lunch and Learn. Uh, like I mentioned to everybody else, we will definitely download this recording, get it over to you, send the link for the trailer to the movie. And if you're not doing anything else this weekend that you're going to be home, you might as well watch Wishman on Netflix. Um, thanks again, Frank Shankwitz, for being our guest on Team Referral Network's Brown Bag Lunch and Learn. If you want to know any more information about Team, you can go to teamreferralnetwork.com. And Frank, I'll send the slides to them and it'll have the information for your um, website. But go ahead and tell us what your website is. And again, wishman1.com, wishman, the number one.com. Kelly, thank you so much. This has been fun. Thanks, Frank. All right. Everybody take care. Have a great day. Stay safe. So long.